Hello, my name is Ash Danica. I'm a research scientist at Eureka Scientific. And uh, today I will talk about my work on the condition for cold superwind in massive subfamily regions. And I recently did some work in collaboration with Salio and Will Gay on the radiative cooling of the superwinds. And this is the outline of my talks. I will talk about the superwind and superbubble and the formation of radioactive coolings and how I implemented hydrodynamic simulation of superwinds and photonization modeling of these superwind results. Typically in self-forming regions, uh, we see the formation of uh, superwind and we also in X-ray observation, we also see uh, large scale superbubble. However, radio and ALMA observations uh, suggested the uh, formation of uh, cool superwinds. Here you see the uh, schematic view of superwinds. On the left, you see a region with uh, formation of superbubble, and on right, we see because of uh, cooling the bubble uh, broken. And uh, there is uh, some theoretical work by Chavira Kelage in which they assume uh, adiabatic fluid model and uh, in these solutions we see the, the density and temperature uh, are at as a function of uh, RF function or radius and, and they decline by power of minus 2 and power of minus 4 over 3 respectively and however there is a semi-analytic uh, study by uh, Silic uh, in which uh, they uh, couple uh, radiative cooling functions to fluid model and uh, here on right uh, you see departure from advert solutions because of radiative coolings and here you see, you see different four different region wind region which defined by waiver in 1977 and we have the region of free expanding wind regions and formation of hot bubble in temperature profile and formation of shell in density profile and then followed by ambient medium. In order to implement hydrothermal simulations of sub-servant winds, uh, we set some uh, boundary conditions and some initial conditions and I use uh, the package Mayhem uh, which built on uh, the flash hydrodynamics codes and in this package, uh, the radiative cooling function and photoheating function coupled to uh, the fluid equations, I use a service 99 to make SED profiles and use this SED profile as an input for uh, or hydrodynamic simulation also or photonization modeling. And uh, here you see the fluid equation which, I, which we solve using Mayhams and the radiative cooling functions uh, calculated using uh, cooling efficiency and photoheating function also obtained using uh, heating efficiency which uh, made by photo ionization cross sections and SED profile and here you see the result uh, hydrodynamic simulation on right we see 1D profile and on the wind with low velocity 250 and uh, we see a departure from uh, uh, adiabatic solutions on dash line adiabatic solutions and solid line is those which uh, predicted by our high dynamic simulations and this step dep uh, departure is depends as you see on thermal wind velocity and here you see 2d simulations which show formation larger scale uh, super bubble in them temperature and density profile and based on departure of density profile from adiabatic solution uh, we classify wind under adiabatic bubble and catastrophic cooling uh, with bubble and catastrophic cooling without bubble CV and CEC and uh, using that criteria we classify uh, different wind region in parameter space of mass loading rate, wind thermal velocity and metallicity ambient density and here we see by 
increase in metal acidity we increase radiative cooling and also by decreasing wind thermal velocity we also uh, increase the radiative coolings and here there is a wider parameter range which we have change of mass loading rate as you see by increasing the mass loading rate the chance of uh, radiative cooling increase so we have higher radiative cooling when we have higher mass loading rate and here there is a parameter range on the right bottom MC is momentum conserving winds uh, which we have momentum driven outflow and is formed by very strong radiative cooling and uh, the formation of uh, bubble and shell totally suppress uh, however uh, we have different H2 regions and the thing which I uh, consider in previous model was H typical H2 regions which has cluster radius of 1 power 6 and ambient density of less than 10,000 uh, invert cubic centimeter and uh, for outer compacts uh, we have uh, much higher ambient density and uh, 10 to the power of 4 invert cubic centimeter and uh, much a smaller cluster radius 0 0.01 power 6 and uh, I also run hydrodynamic simulation for, for the parameter which suitable for outer compact H2 regions and here we see it by uh, decreasing cluster radius we also increase radiative cooling so in the region which uh, which parameter which uh, have adiabatic solution if we uh, reduce cluster radius we also have uh, CB catastrophe cooling with wobble and CC catastrophe coolings also there we see dependence on density ambient density by increasing ambient density because uh, the ambient pressure is increased uh, we also change reduce the ch chance of uh, catastrophic cooling because of ambient pressure I use uh, the result of hydrodynamic simulation density and temperature profile which predicted by our hydrodynamic simulation I, I use this temperature profile as an input the, to photonization calculation by Claudi and using uh, this calculation uh, I made uh, collision ionization combined with photonizations on top we see the model pure photonization without any thermal effect from hydrodynamics and on bottom we see CPI CPI is collision ionization plus photonization uh, and because of temperature profile which made by hydrodynamic simulation we have different a departure from pure photonization we, in the bubble we see here the formation of oxygen 6 which we don't see in uh, pure photonizations and other thing I did uh, is a time dependent photonization calculation which I did using the mayhem uh, non equilibrium ionization typically happen in the region where the time scale of collision ionization is much longer of time scale of radiative cooling so radiative cooling is very fast and here is in this plot you see in the carbon 4 and carbon 5 and also oxygen 6 and oxygen 7 and we see the departure from collision ionization and in, this is the region uh, below mm, below 10 to the power of uh, 6 where the nanocubalization happens and here we see the result for pure photonization collision ionization plus photonization and non equilibrium photonization at the bottoms so we see enhancement of uh, carbon 4 in the region of free expanding winds and this is because of time dependence calculations and the other thing uh, is uh, we did this emissivity and 
by integration we calculated uh, line luminosity uh, which is uh, comparable to observed flux and uh, for more results you can look at my poster in focus meetings 4 and uh, here I made UV diagnostic diagrams and as you see in the this plot uh, the shadow the shady light color are uh, for collisionization and solid color for nanochrome photonization here you see for high metallicity we have enhancement of uh, the enhancement of uh, carbon 4 and for low metallicity we also see uh, enhancement of oxygen 6 and other thing is my future plans I plan to incorporate uh, radiative transfer units because mayhem uh, calculation done using a simple uh, power law uh, radial assumptions here you see uh, 2 power of minus 2 and there is now detailed calculation optical tips and detailed calculation of this can done using the photon radiative transfer units and when we include radiative transfer unit we have radiative pressure which lead to uh, radiative derivatives also outflow and in this link you can look at or hydrodynamic simulation result and animations and this is summary of all my talks I talk about how I implement hydrodynamic simulations and how uh, I calculated collisionization and non localizations and I did, did I present some results on uh, wind uh, region of ultra compact H2 region which is the paper in preparations and in ultra compact H2 region the ambient density is higher than typical H2 region and cluster radius is smaller than uh, typical uh, cluster in H2 regions so if you have any question you can ask me in a slack channel so I will be happy to answer thank you for your attention